How beautiful is this location? How inviting is that road? <laughs> Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to a beautiful day in Belgium. Right now, I'm on my way to Spa Francorchamps. Je m'appelle Claude. Je de coupe plow. It's the 24 hours of spa this weekend. In addition to that, my friend and good friend of this channel, Phil, is also participating in a separate race in a newly acquired race car, an Aston Martin DBR9. So I thought, on my way back to the UK after my latest adventure in this F-Type, I would swing by to support him, check out his new car, and yeah, just enjoy a sunny day in Belgium. Bonjour. Speak parking for the historic. Uh, do you have a class? Uh, the, the guy's just coming. Should I wait here somewhere? Yes, yeah, you can wait on the parking on the left side. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. This is actually my very first time at Spa. I've always wanted to visit, but just never really had the opportunity. Based on the roads here and the current scenery, I'm gonna say it's one of the most beautiful racetracks in the world, and I haven't even seen it yet, apart from seeing it on TV. Uh, oh my God. Who does he think he is? Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> you can't pull this off. How can you <laughs> blag your way in. Oh, I'm the ultimate blagger. But how? Yeah, you can't ride around on a scooter pretending like you're cool. I am cool. I've seen your car. Shall I go and park next to your car? Yeah, uh, and let me give you all the stuff. That you need. Now, I would love to pretend this is the first time we've been this close, but. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a familiar place to be. <laughs> this is, I'm getting the full experience today. How are you on dirt roads on this thing? Oh, I'm great. I mean, I've seen you in dirt roads on a four-wheeler, but two wheels, I'm suddenly inherently nervous. Mum, I'm sorry again. Well, you remember we spun out immediately last time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm inherently nervous, because we've got fundamentally two less wheels to grip us. <laughs> Here we go! To the paddock! Whee! Is that a pencil in your pocket? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've played with this car on Gran Turismo, Forza, I've done laps of the ring, I've done laps of Laguna, I've done laps everywhere in that, and now I get to do it for real. It's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. Because this is an iconic, modern, I'm obsessed with modern classics as you know, it's a modern classic race car, because when did this compete from like mid noughties to yeah, early 2010s? Yeah, 2005, 2006 they were built, and they competed until 11, 12, somewhere around there. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, and hopefully I'm not, it's just a hunking great V12 engine, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as a race car, yeah. Greta would not approve. No, she would not. <laughs> Give me a sort of tour. Is that NOS? No, I'm joking. Of course it is. Yeah. But I just, <laughs> I press the button, but never too soon. <laughs> Because this is, it's not a DB9, I mean it is, but it's way more than that. This is a proper like prototype. Yeah. So it's called a DBR9, as you can see there, and essentially what the rules were, you had to use the same chassis, you had to use the same base engine block, and then you could go from there. And I'm oversimplifying it in a big way. But ProDrive, who built Subaru rally cars, most people will know them for that. They had a client called Frederick Dorr, who, organized them to continue doing more things, a private client. He had Subaru rally cars built for him and they were always white with no sponsors, really cool. Very cool, very cool. And he said, Ferrari 550, that's a cool car. I'd like a Le Mans car made out of that. And yeah, when as, we all. as one does. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, and he said, and, and ProDrive said, you're a real client, you know what this is gonna cost? Sure, we'll do it. And so that entire 550 Le Mans program, GT1, yes. was built for him. 
but they, I want to meet this guy. Oh, no. <laughs> but they built those as basically each car was a one-off. And what you have to think of the DBR9 is Aston Martin wanted to go racing. They went to ProDrive, and ProDrive took all the lessons from the 550 program. And this is essentially a 550 GT1 Evo. Ah, but, but obviously bigger numbers so that all the parts were more available building it was cheaper uh, and it became a more affordable car to run within the context of GT1 okay. and you can now get one and take it in to historic events all around the world yeah there's historic events there's I mean there's, I'm, I'm being flagged by by my friends who are also doing GT1 to come and do there's a race in Dubai at the end of the year yes. um, and Hello. it's an endurance race so you go and bring friends also, you can just use it for track days. But there's five events with Peter Auto the, a year. There's, there's, uh, and they're all on YouTube, and you can watch them, and it's great. This event here, where it's spot the 24 is a support race. This is on YouTube. I'm not going that fast. I drove it for the first time two days ago. No. <laughs> I saw it. She turned up. I've never driven it. I bought it a month ago, sight unseen. I sat in it. 10 days ago to get fitted and understand what it was and also drool a lot you know sure. <laughs> it's hard not to. Yeah. and uh, and finally um, yeah drove it two days ago still learning a lot so way off the pace got really lucky yesterday had a really good run um, I mean I hate blowing smoke up your ass you know it's the thing that I like to do the least in this world I don't know what you're talking about but <laughs> the fact that I didn't realize you'd basically never driven this car before you say you're off the pace where did you finish yesterday third Yes. <laughs> I um I don't know if I'm gonna get in there. <laughs> well, you might get in, but you might not get out. <laughs> maybe maybe you can hold this. Sure. I mean, oh, oh bloody hell! What do you do? Should I dumb bum for? Yeah, dive in. I uh, know you can get the leg further up and then dive in. Look at that! Look at him squeeze. He's like origami. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is real deal. So hold that on. There we go, there we go. Oh yes! There's a lot of buttons there, mate. It's, 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 it's a, a lot, lot to try and figure out. <laughs> and your mirrors are non-existent. Like, oh, that's, no, like that's, that's not a thing. They are actually awful. Like I have no idea who's beside me, who's anywhere. Do you have anything which helps you with what's coming behind you? No, nothing. <laughs> um, but you know, first rule of Italian driving, what's behind you doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing though which I find insane, which I always forget to sitting in a race car, is basically how far back I am from everything. You know, not like a road car where you've kind of got great visibility. I'm I'll on let the you, floor. I'll yeah, let thank you hold you. that and actually show people. You can't see the front wing. No. I and mean, I was terrified, but you get in the car and immediately it shrinks around you and you understand where things are fine because yeah this is i'm now at drive oh, so god what drive at eye level i guess yeah <laughs> I'm lovely. sure i've made up that phrase but anyway yeah i literally can't see, i have no idea where the front of the car is but it seems very far away and steering wheel right back towards me here i mean it's it's cushy, mate. Eh? It's cushy. It's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> and uh, I've got this is the most important part. That's my bollock blower. Oh, 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 <laughs> very nice. That's aimed literally right at the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. This is so special. What an awesome, awesome thing. And th there is some good news as well. Because you handled driving around in the Senna so well, I've found out that it is possible to relocate what's in the passenger side put a second seat in there and take you, dear viewer, for a passenger ride. <laughs> <laughs> mom, I'm, I'm not gonna go, mom. I'm not gonna, she's already, you know, I've made this joke before and it's not even a joke. My mother doesn't enjoy me getting in cars with Philip. Yeah, but this one's safe. Look at all the roll cages. <laughs> I think it's fair to say I slightly underestimated what I was attempting today. Uh, just to clarify, Phil's taking part in a support race for the main 24 hours of Spa. Uh, he's competing alongside other DBR9s, but also Maserati MC12 GT1s, uh, 996 RSR Porsche 911s, uh, there's Lamborghini Murcielago GT1s, a whole range of incredible sounding, incredible looking, iconic race cars. So yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty special to witness. Look at this now on the ground. 
take off. As you are next time.
exciting. Phil is genuinely in the mix, in the fight for third place with an Audi R8 and Joe McCarr. <laughs> So much noise going on. Intense, but yeah, this is the pit stop window now. Phil is, Phil is the second person to stop of his three way battle. Pretty incredible P6 for his second race in that car. He was in the fight for P3 at one stage, but a lot of the other teams, a lot of the other teams did driver swaps. He didn't, he did the entire race by himself. And some of the driver swaps put pro drivers into their cars. So a couple of MC12s came out of nowhere. And as you might have seen, he was literally fighting for all of his life out of that final corner. Wow, could this have been amazing? A totally unexpected, but incredible day.